One of the last things I want to discuss in this series is bundle size and budget. What we're going to do today is we're going to learn how we can set a bundle size budget for each of the chunks that are sent to the client. This way, it'll just keep us very attentive to how large our bundles are getting as we develop, and it'll make it a lot easier to keep track of all the sizes as we're going. So we're gonna have to use another NPM package to set this up, and I'll show you how to do that. So the first thing that we have to do is install the NPM package. So that's just NPM I bundle size. Okay, perfect. Then the next thing on our list is we have to add a file for this to work, and it is called bundle size.config, and it's a JSON file. So now we're going to have to decide what chunks we want to run this on. So I'm going to do what we were doing before. I'm going to run our bundle analyzer. So analyze equals true, npm run build. Then that will open those three windows in our browser for us to see our bundles. So yeah, now we can see these bundles that we discussed before. We can see the Firebase Auth, the Pocket Base, the React DOM. I'm going to, well, I already did, I already put the top two bundles in here within our bundle size config. This is what this folder should look like. It's just a JSON object with a files array of objects that have a path and a max size. What we then are gonna do is we're gonna come over to our package.json and we're gonna add on a separate function that we can run. And all this is called is just bundle size and run the bundle size package from our npm. Perfect. So now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do an npm run build and and npm run bundle size. And let's see what we get. Okay, so there you go. So I set one of them, one of their gzip size, max sizes to five kilobytes. And this goes over, clearly, it's 49.3. And then over here we have 43.9. And it's under our max size. So you can see all that here. This is just an easy way for you to keep track of your bundle size over time. And maybe if you want to set a, preset a bundle size for maybe your Firebase package or something like that. This is how you would do that, and it'll make it really easy for you to keep track of it. There is one other thing I want to discuss before we wrap up this series. We already talked about this in the last series in the Next.js 13 crash course. However, now within Next.js 13, we have this Google font and next font that we can use this package. And this gives us the versatility to use Google fonts it's a lot easier if they're a variable font like inter. This is what just ships default with next. And it essentially allows for us to self-host our fonts so that every time we're loading our page, we don't have to reach out to Google to get that font. This is something that's pretty unique to Next.js. This is really powerful. You can see how you use this already. I can I will leave the documentation for this for how this works in the description of this video. And yeah, that's definitely something you should be using within your projects. Lastly, let's just quickly talk about Lighthouse scores for a second. I'm going to do an npm. We already built it, so I'm going to do npm run start. And now we have it running on a local development server. I'll just open this. And what you can do, you may already know this, you can right click, inspect. You can come in here and you can go to Lighthouse and then you can analyze page load. So you can see that on our local development server, this could change if you launch this to Vercel or Netlify. However, you can see so far we have a pretty good performance score of 99% and accessibility, best practices, and SEO. This is 
obviously what you're going to want moving forward and quite frankly one of the main reasons you would use Next.js unless unless you're really trying to build a native web app um, you also if you come in here I'm going to create a new terminal and I'm going to run npx an npx command and I'm going to do unlighthouse and then site and it's going to be localhost 3000 Let's see what this gives us. So what Unlighthouse does is this will give you a lighthouse score for every single page within your application so you don't have to go through it and run a manual lighthouse. Just saves a bit of time. I will say I have had some issues with Unlighthouse. It's given me some some scores that were not quite accurate and I've had to tinker with it a little bit however it is pretty powerful and it is something that should be in your web development arsenal let's see what it gives us when this loads yeah, so it gave us a slightly different score let's, let's see what the issue is so it says our total blocking time is long yeah, this will have something to do with some JavaScript clogging the main thread. However, that that doesn't matter for the scope of this series. I just wanted to quickly show you how these things work. So that's really the end of this series. That wraps it up. If you apply all these steps that we talked about, so if you're using the image component, if you're using script, the script component in your layouts in order to only load a script once, if you combine that with using your bundle analyzer to see where your packages are really big, use dynamic imports where possible, as well as track your scores with Lighthouse, you shouldn't have a problem getting that 100% performance score. Unless you're really rendering a ton of JavaScript on the client, you have a ton of crazy animations going on, for example, or a whole ton of CSS, that's just unnecessary. You may have issues. However, by and large, you should be able to get that perfect 100 and your clients will appreciate you for that. So yeah, that's all I have for today. Thank you for listening to this whole series and yeah, we'll catch you in the next one.